So uh, good morning from me as well. Uh, as Martin already told you, I will uh, present the work that is currently being done on the third extension uh, of the delta set, which is uh, what he called tier three, uh, and deals with uh, some uh, experimentally known structures that we want to use. Uh, the main reason we need those or we want to have those is because, as Martin told you already, uh, most of the test set members that have been introduced and calculated right now are strictly hypothetical. So I did a, a search of, of a database of uh, these 570 cases that Martin uh, introduced and only about 10% of those are known experimentally. So we need a bit more uh, realistic uh, test cases as well uh, to add some uh, uh, to, to capture and depict the, the vast uh, diversity of real materials that are uh, under research. And we want those uh, test cases for simplicity reasons to be uh, cubic and have no internal free parameters. Uh, and uh, we would like to have cases up to uh, a nuclear number of 95, which is americium. Uh, and additionally, would like them to represent different bonding types so that we get uh, additional information or different, uh, additional trends. Uh, and I will focus on uh, PBE calculations as well. And another slightly added value is that if we find uh, cases that have magnetism that can be realized without supercells, we will include that as well so that we could have uh, magnetic structures to uh, where do I, did I look for those candidates because the tier three candidates uh, or the, the tier th three test set members have already been chosen. Uh, uh, they had to be handpicked and I used the largest uh, one large database which is the inter uh, inorganic crystal structure database uh, that knows about 30,000 binary compounds and about 12,000 of those are cubic. So I spent the better part of a month to figure out which of those 12,000 uh, compounds are actually uh, usable and feasible uh, for our test set uh, purposes. So and I came up with about 1,500 uh, unique structures in 23 different structure types that needed to be classified. And uh, I did this classification uh, after calculating uh, electronic different density plots using the Win2K program package uh, with rather crude default uh, computational parameters. Uh, and I tried to class them using five classes. I wanted to ideally get one class member for every element, which uh, is a covalent and ionic, each of those two with or without band gaps in PBE, and one that is metal-like. Uh, that would lead to uh, roughly 500 cases in addition. But if we uh, could pick those a bit more cleverly, we can, of course, ideally halve that number, because we can always uh, uh, satisfy the, the condition for two elements per test case. And the, the main thing I did, I visually uh, evaluated the density plots I created with min 2 k and I looked for some uh, telltale criteria to class the bond type. And the example criteria would be uh, the electron accumulation between atoms to, uh, uh, to hint for uh, at, at covalency. Uh, I would uh, check the difference density in the interstitial. Uh, I would uh, look also at the uh, sphericity or non-sphericity of isolines around atoms, and I would try to see different charges for different atom types, and to put that into uh, a more uh, visual uh, perspective. I would like to give some examples for the clear-cut cases. Uh, for instance, this picture here shows that. Uh, Difference, electronic difference density for a gold antimony compound in, a, in its own structure type. Actually, I could not find another structure, another compound in this, this strange structure type, which is, uh, according to my personal criteria, clearly ionic because you see uh, uh, electronic accumulation between the atoms, hardly any 
electronic accumulation in the interstitial uh, and non-spherical isolines around the atoms. So this one is rather clearly cut uh, covalent. Uh, Metal-like example would be this uh, iron gallium alloy in the Heusler structure where you can see uh, everywhere basically electron accumulation in the interstitial, uh, fairly spherical uh, atoms at the gallium side. The, you, ca you can see uh, directionality in the, in the iron D at, uh, atoms, but it's still due to the, the large, rather large electronic accumulation in the uh, interstitial, typically metal-like. Uh, and for the ionic uh, examples, I chose this uh, rubidium chloride in the sodium chloride structure, where you can see uh, you have uh, large accumulation around the chlorine atoms, uh, depletion around the rubidium atoms, and almost no change in the interstitial. So that would be rather clearly ionic. Uh, then, of course, there's the problem of mixed cases, where you don't have this clear-cut criteria fulfilled. So on the left-hand side, you see that this is a thallium iodide structure, uh, also in uh, rock salt structure, where you can see still rather spherical isolines and uh, accumulation around the iodine and depletion around the thallium atoms. But you, s you s also see some accumulation uh, additional accumulation at, uh, at the, along the, the atom uh, directions. So this one I would, uh, for, for classification purposes, call covalent ionic mixed. Uh, on the right hand side you see uh, this is a chromium-3 silicide in the chromium-3 silicide structure. And there you also have uh, across uh, the whole depicted plane uh, electronic accumulation in the interstitial but you also have additional accumulation between the chromium atoms. So that would be then a mixed covalent metal-like structure. Uh, so to summarize this, this tier three test set, uh, I found 280 additional experimentally known structures uh, of, of uh, which 272 are additional. I could use eight uh, oxides from uh, Martin's test set. Uh, I could find 20 usable different structure types. So the structure type diversity is an added bonus in this part of the test set. Uh, but 102 of those cases say are only of mixed bonding types, so they could not be clearly, or, uh, clearly put into one of the groups. Uh, I found 79 magnetic ones. Um, and another thing uh, I didn't mention before, the test set that Martin presented consists mainly of non-gapped materials so of, of his five, 570 cases. I think only 40 have a PBE gap, at least in my preliminary mean to K calculations. And uh, in the tier three test set, there will be 72 additional ones, uh, which is also nice. But as you can see here, we, there are some, uh, some holes, sadly. So uh, the red elements uh, don't have any cases yet because there are no, uh, no experimentally known mat uh, materials for, for the noble gases for acetine and francium. Uh, the orange ones, uh, there you could, we could only find one bonding type, either because there are only very few experimentally known structures or because they tend towards a given bond type. Uh, the, the light green ones, there you have uh, three different bond types uh, but this, those are mainly the D-block uh, elements. Those are usually uh, conducting, so they don't have a bent gap, which is not unexpected. But there are, I could not find yet uh, insulating cases for those uh, elements. And the darker green, the darker shade of green, are the elements that uh, could be uh, put into four or even all five cat categories, which would be, of course, the, the final game. Um, so, as I said, there are still some gaps in this tier three set. So, I'm currently still working on an, ex an, an extension of the extension, which we call tier three prime. And the idea would be to fill up those gaps 
and uh, we, did, we did so in two steps already and the third one is uh, currently <coughs> underway. Uh, we uh, took some experimentally known uh, noble gas uh, compounds, namely this xenon tetrafluoride and uh, krypton difluoride and put them in cubic uh, in uh, cubic cells so that we could conserve the differences uh, the, sorry, the distances between the noble gas and the fluorine atom. Uh, another thing we did uh, mainly for for uh, the, for acetine and francium and also radium, uh, we just duplicated uh, known solids of neighboring elements. So we used basically the trains of the periodic table. So for instance, for acetine, uh, I just did uh, a francium acetine compound in the rock salt structure that uh, is similar to, the, to, to all other uh, alkali metal uh, halides. And the, the last thing, as I said, that is still currently being done uh, is, is I'm trying to find uh, transition halides, oxides and sulfates. I basically just decorate, decorate the usual structure types, rock salt, cesium chloride structure with uh, halides and the transition metal and try to find if I get a, a compound that shows a gap. I have some promising uh, candidates for certain elements already, but I didn't include them yet because I'm far from finished. Uh, the idea there is that we get at least four different cases for every element. So I managed to do so for the main groups already. So the main group elements are basically done, but uh, the noble gases will of course have only two and the transition metal elements, they are still underway. Uh, just a brief explanation on what I meant in cubizing the noble gases, we take those two experimentally known fluorides, as I said, and put them in cubic structures. And they will give a then mostly covalent uh, looking electronic density differences. Uh, and actually mo almost all of them uh, are conducting. So I think there are two or three candidates with a band gap, but most of them show no band gap. So uh, in summary, uh, the tier three test set that is uh, more or less done. I'm running the high precision calculations on that now. Uh, consists of 272 additional uh, cases. And uh, the main goal of this test set was to supplement experimentally known materials to offset the many hypothetical uh, compounds that we have had before. And we would like to add an additional variety regarding different bond types. And uh, as an added bonus, we get different uh, structure types as well. And for the T3 uh, prime set, this is uh, still in, in progress, but as I said, the cases for the noble cases are chosen. Uh, and uh, I could supplement additional cases for the, uh, for the rare elements, rare in the sense that the, the ICSD only knows a few compounds uh, ex uh, the experimentalists know only a few compounds and I'm still searching for the deep block insulators. And with that, I would like to acknowledge uh, the funding and the compute time and I would like to thank you for your attention. Uh,